Welcome to part three of the screencast series on building single page applications with Kendo UI's MVVM framework and SPA components. In this episode, you'll complete the basics of the image gallery. You'll get the add form to save a new image to the server, show that image in a list, and have the list of images scroll horizontally. If you haven't watched the first two episodes yet, I recommend doing that now. Once you've done that, though, it's time to jump in head first and get some code flowing. Getting the add form in place is pretty easy. There's an add kite link at the top of the page, and you'll need an observable object to handle clicking it. The observable will be attached to the layout in this case because it's the layout template that holds the button. Add an observable named gallery with a function named add clicked in it. This is a callback function for clicking the add kite button, so it gets a standard event args. Call prevent default on the args to keep the browser from trying to handle the click directly. And once again, you're going to trigger a custom event from here. In this case, name the event image colon new, keeping with the subject colon verb convention. Outside of the gallery observable, add an event handler to the gallery. In this handler, show the add image form in the main element of the layout. Now update the layout by passing the gallery observable as the model. Go back to the templates.html file to edit the layout template. You should see a list item with an anchor that points to a hash mark. Add a data bind attribute to this anchor and bind the click event to the add clicked method that we just added to the model. Head over to the browser and click an image to view it. Now click the Add Kite button and you'll see the Add Form again. Easy enough, right? You can click the images and click back to the Add Form anytime you need to. So now it's time to save the image when the Save button is clicked. The Save button already has the needed data bind attribute in the template to handle clicking it. You just need to add a Save Clicked method on the Add Image View model. Be sure to call the usual prevent default on the event args to keep the browser from trying to post the form back to the server. Now trigger an image colon save event so that you can handle the process of saving the image from somewhere other than the view model. You'll need to pass the image name and URL along with the event trigger. And you can either pass two separate arguments, or my preference, pass an object literal with named values. This keeps the argument list short, there's really only one argument, and allows flexibility in adding and removing data as needed without having to update the event handler. Outside of the add image observable, handle its image colon save event. The handler function receives a single parameter which contains all of the image data from the form. In the handler then, you need to add the image data to the image list data source. And you could do this by calling imagelist.imageDataSource.add passing the data into it. But I don't like reaching into an object like this having to know the details of how the object does things. Instead, I'm going to create an add image method on the image list object. This takes in the data for the image and calls the image data source .add for me. The add method returns an observable object for the image that we are adding. Hold on to this so it can be returned from the method. Back in the image save event handler, call image list .add image passing in the data. You'll want to show the image immediately after saving it too. The easy way to do that would be to copy and paste code from the image selected event handler but you know that code duplication is the devil, and you wouldn't do that, right? Instead, take the image selected event handler function and separate it from the event binding, giving it a name of show image. Update the event binding to call this method, and then back in the image save handler, take the image that was returned from the add image method and pass it to the show image method. 
head back over to the browser, add a name and URL to the form, click Save, and bam! The kitty has been added to the gallery. Okay, that was a bit quick, but it wasn't anything new, really. You're just using the same tools and techniques that you've been using to build the app so far, and you just put it all together into a new feature, which is now complete. Well, maybe not quite complete. If you click on the Add Kite link again, the name and URL that you put in previously are still there. So to clear those out, go back to the Add Image Observable, and in the Save Clicked method, set the name and URL attributes to empty strings after triggering the Image Save event. Now the next time you add a kitty and click the Add link again, the form will be empty. There's one more problem though. If you refresh the browser, the image that you just added is missing. It was never saved to the server, even though we added it to the data source. So we'll fix that next. The image data source for the image list needs to be configured for creating new models. This is done with the create configuration on the transport, which pretty much looks the same as the read configuration to start with. You'll need to add a type attribute and set it to post though. This tells the data source to do an HTTP post back to the server as if a form is being submitted. In addition to the transport, the data source also needs to know a little bit about the model that it will be saving. Specifically, it needs to know the ID field. This is used to determine if the data source should do a create or an update when saving the model to the server, among other things. With the ID attribute set and the create transport configured, there's one more line of code to add. In the add image method of the image list observable, make a call to this.imageDataSource.sync. Calling this method will force the data source to sync all changes back to the server, saving the new image. Head back to the browser and add an image again. Now refresh the browser and the image is still there in the list. If you add another image though, things start to get a little funny in the list. Instead of looping back around to the next row like it's currently doing, the image list should really just create a scroll bar and allow you to scroll left and right. Getting the list of kitties to scroll requires a few tricks involving CSS and a tweak to the data binding for the list. You'll need to adjust the width of the image list based on the number of images in the list. Don't worry too much about the actual CSS scrolling though. Most of this has already been provided. So in the image list observable, add an image count attribute and set it to zero. This field will contain a count of the images that are currently displayed in the list. To keep this count up to date, add a change method to the data source configuration. This method fires when, well, when the data source changes. In there, update the image count using the length of the data source view. Now as a side note, the view of the data source is the current list of models that should be visible on the screen. If you're using sorting, paging, or filtering, the view will be different than the full list of models from the data attribute. The view only contains the models for the current page according to the sorting and filtering applied. It's generally a good idea to use the view of the data source because of this. To calculate the width of the list for scrolling, add a scrolling size method. Get the image count and multiply it by 165, the number of pixels that each image takes up in the list, accounting for all of the CSS styling. Then return the calculated width plus the letters PX for pixels. This gives you the final width that the image list needs to be whenever the image data source is modified. There's one last thing to be done. Back in the templates.html file, modify the kitty list template to include a wrapper div around the list view. Give this div a class of scrollable and add a data bind attribute. In here, add style and set the width to the scrolling size method name. With that done, head back to the browser and refresh. If you have enough images in your list, you will be presented with a scroll bar that moves horizontally. Of course, you can still click an image to view it and add new images too. And with that, the second chapter in the life of a kitty gallery is done. 
you've got an image gallery that can add and show images now. And when you refresh the browser, the images are still there because they're saved and loaded from a server. There's a lot going on in this one file, and we're having to scroll up and down a lot to see everything we need. There's also some work left to do in the actual app. Coming up then, we'll split the code out into multiple files to make it easier to see and understand, and we'll introduce a kendo.router to the app, allowing individual kitty images to be bookmarked and linked to. Then when the link or bookmark is clicked, the app will show the image that you want right away. So stay tuned as the Kitta Gallery continues to grow and add more awesome and images.